Hey y'all, we are making chicken pot pie, a comfort food dish that we all know and love. But let's talk about comfort food dishes for a second. All of these recipes take way, way too long to accomplish in my personal opinion, like all of them, hours on end. So I wanted chicken pot pie. I went to SouthernLiving.com, found a recipe for our best chicken pot pie. It's called Old Fashioned Chicken Pot Pie. Looked it up, took way too long, over two hours. So I took that recipe, made it my own, made it the Ivy version, and we are gonna have chicken pot pie on the table in less than an hour. Let's do it. All right, right out of the gate, this recipe says, combine first seven ingredients, which include like a whole chicken, some water, salt, pepper, celery, onion, but basically it just says to cook a whole chicken in water and we're gonna cook the chicken and get the chicken broth that we use to cook the chicken in to make this chicken pot pie. That says it takes like an hour plus time for it to come up to a boil, so I don't have time for that. What I did was I went ahead and bought my favorite chicken stock and I'm using that. And I bought a rotisserie chicken because I don't have time to cook a whole chicken. Now, here's where it gets tricky. You need to know how much liquid you're gonna need to use. Later on in the recipe, it says somewhere, measure three cups of broth and set aside, reserve remaining broth for other uses. Now, so I know I'm really only gonna need three cups of this broth. So there's four cups in here, a quart in that box. Bring your quart of chicken stock or broth, bring it up to a boil, and then we are going to add in our frozen mixed vegetables. So in the mixed vegetable medley, there are peas and carrots, because duh, corn and green beans. If you ask me, the green beans are a little unnecessary in the chicken pot pie, but I think like all classic chicken pot pies, these are just the standard ingredients because everyone just puts in the frozen mixed vegetable medley. If I could write to the people that make the frozen mixed vegetable medley, uh, I would say that we shouldn't include the green beans and then we just have the corn, the peas, and the carrots. But for the sake of argument today, we're using the green bean mixture because there isn't one that doesn't exist without the green beans. So that's that on that at Ivy Odom. What are your opinions? Whenever I'm making the things, do I need to actually like really love every single thing that I make or do I just need to give you some recipes that I know a lot of people would like but I don't necessarily have to love them, you know? Like not everybody loves everything. I am not a picky eater. There are only three things in this world that I don't like. Cantaloupe, cauliflower, and I can't even think of the third one. So it's really only two. Do you have foods that you don't like? If you have like non-negotiables, like no way you will ever touch that with a 10 foot pole, I would love to read about in the comments. You see how it's bubbling? That's what they want. It's thick. Turn off the heat and then we're gonna add in our vegetables and our chicken back. Why is chicken the best? Because! <laughs> you want it to be a little salty because once you add in all of these things, the vegetables and the chicken, it's gonna dilute this because the salt that you put in here has to cover the amount of salt for the chicken, the vegetables, and the gravy. This is looking so good. I left the chicken in like big hunks just because I think it looks really pretty. My filling is done at this point. Now, here is the kicker to all of this. If you wanted to do this ahead, this is the point where you would stop. So say you had like some extra time during the middle of the day and you wanted to get a head start on your dinner for the night, you can make this cover it, put it in the fridge, let it cool. You could let it stay for about two to three days in the fridge like this. You would need to heat it back up in order to use it to put your pie crust on it. So I'm going to take this off the heat, move it up there to my island, and we're gonna roll out the crust, put it in a, a dish, and bake it up. It's gonna be amazing. Yum. Now, it is time to put this into pot pie form. I am not the world's biggest fan of chicken pot pie. I know, I know, kill me, kill me, kill me. It's true, it, it, it's a fact. I love the filling of chicken pot pie. Would much rather have it served over pasta or rice with some like cheese on top than underneath crust. So that's that on that in the chicken pot pie. Now you know my thoughts. I'm still making it because I know a lot of people love chicken pot pie. Another shortcut that even the original recipe calls to do 
is to use refrigerated pie crust. Now, if you wanted to get extra fancy, you could follow this recipe word for word. Boil your chicken, use your homemade broth, make your homemade pie crust, do whatever you want to do. Like I said, weeknight meals, ain't got time for that. So enter my friend, refrigerated pie crust. These things come in a circle. And we are about to have to defy geometry and turn this circle into a rectangle. Stretch it out a little bit with our hands and then roll it as best we can into the best rectangle shape that you can possibly muster. But guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, here we go. It'll do, donkey. It'll do. So you know what I said about defying geometry? Well, there's really no geometric way to turn a circle into a rectangle, but there is a way to turn a circle into an oval long enough to cover your rectangular spot. We are going to transfer this filling into a 9 by 13 dish, but before I do that, I'm going to spray it with my ye old friend Pamela. Now, do I really think that it needs this? Not really, but it can't hurt, right? Now, to make my life easier with this whole transferring of the filling, I'm going to move this as close as possible to this and then pour it in. This is the hardest part of the entire recipe, transferring the crust onto the baking dish. But I have a suggestion to make it easier. What we're gonna do, this works for any pie, by the way. Take your rolling pin and we're gonna roll our pie crust up onto the rolling pin. Be very gentle, don't use a lot of pressure. And see, it carries it. And then I'm gonna unroll it on top of the dish. So easy. Boom, look at that. Some recipes might tell you to cut some of this excess pie crust off that's hanging over. Not me, because I know how much y'all love it. So what we're gonna do is fold under anything that is hanging off the edges and then crimp the edges of the crust with a fork. So let's fold in these. Instead of folding them over, because that makes the top of the crust look ugly, we're gonna fold them under. Look how pretty this is, y'all. It's almost too pretty to bake. Like, I, I'm scared that's gonna mess up in the oven. Now, what I'm going to do is cut slits in the pie crust so that steam can escape. Otherwise, it won't be able to escape and it'll bubble up too much and it might overflow. So this is very important. You can get really fancy with these designs or you don't have to. I think for the sake of prettiness, I'm just gonna cut like kind of like a four slit scenario in the center. And then the recipe does not call to do this, but I am going to brush it with a beaten egg just because I think that makes it look really pretty, golden brown and shiny. There is a difference between brushing something in butter and egg. The egg adds that like sheen on it that is classic for any kind of pie crust. My oven has been preheating to 400 degrees for this entire time. <laughs> So I'm going to put it in for about 20 minutes. Everything in here is cooked. The only thing we're doing is getting this pie crust golden brown and puffy and crispy and yummy. So that's gonna take about 20 minutes. Yum. Yum. It looks so good. The crust is crusty. The crimping edges are beautiful and golden. And if you love crust, you are going to love how much crust how many edge pieces you can get with this. It looks so good, I'm so proud of it. If I put this on the table for a family that I don't have, they would be amazed. I don't have kids or a husband, but if I made this for my mom and dad, they would be so impressed. I'm impressed. I'm a professional and I'm impressed. Let's dig into this thing. I can't wait. I'm like, I am legit excited about this. Y'all, it's legit good. Like, I'm not lying. Old fashioned, classic chicken pot pie. Less than an hour on the table. I calculated up all of my time. It was 55 minutes for homemade chicken pot pie. You can't beat that. I tell you right now, you can't beat it. Use the shortcuts. Recipes are not guidelines. What did I say? They're not hard and fast rules. They are just, you know, a roadmap for success. Change up what you want to change up. You do you, that's my motto. Make chicken pot pie for your family. It's gonna take less than an hour. They're gonna love it. I love it. That's it, the end. There's no more words I can say about it. The end. 
If you want to see more recipe demos like this one where I take classic southern old-fashioned recipes and speed them up for today's times because we ain't got time for any of that, let me know in the comments. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to Southern Living. Do all the social media things. You know what to do. I'll see y'all next week doing who knows what, something fun I hope. Bye y'all.